Hello, my friends. And now let's start right away with the Kupinsk direction. Here, we recorded Russian offensive actions near Petropavlovka yesterday. These battles led to the occupiers making some progress. The front line has shifted approximately 6 kilometers, covering a width of a little over 10 kilometers. Currently, intense battles are taking place in the Ivanovsky area. The village can be considered semi-surrounded, as the occupiers heavily shell it and carry out offensive actions. This may lead to the loss of the village. A similar situation is observed in Sinkivka. Uh, however, the occupiers are unable to fully surround the village, although it's heavily shelled and offensive actions are underway. As a result of the Russian advances towards Kupensk, there are now 6.5 kilometers to the outskirts. This is not a considerable distance, and the occupiers continue to attack further across the fields toward the highway. This situation is extremely challenging. In the Svartova direction, no activity is currently reported and the situation is stable. And in the area of Krimina and Siversk, besides a large number of shallon, attacks have resumed in the forest area. New offensive actions are being recorded towards Yampolivka. Yesterday's attacks on Torske were unsuccessful, prompting the Russians to change the direction of their attacks. The challenging battles continue. Additionally, the main intelligence directorate of the Minister of Defense reported that on November 18th, near the settlement of Dmitriev in the Kursk region, an enemy radio technical position was discovered. As a result of a successful operation by the main intelligence directorate, two valuable Russian radar stations, the 55J6 Neba radar and presumably the Gamma S1E, uh, were damaged. The consequences of this successful operation can be seen in the video. In the Bakhmut direction, uh, the situation remains challenging in the areas of Klushivka and Andreevka. The occupiers persist in storming the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces in these settlements, conducting challenge along the entire front line. There are no changes on this front over the day. Unfortunately, uh, there is distressing news in the Avdiivka direction. The occupiers have managed to advance and consolidate their positions in three locations. Firstly, they confirmed progress of the Russians in the industrial zone, where they have entrenched themselves, resulting in a change in the front line by 600 meters. Offensive actions continue in this area. Additionally, powerful Russian assaults yesterday led to their breakthrough closer to Novobakhmutivka with uh, the advancement measuring uh, three and a half kilometers. This is only in this particular area. Near Novokalinova, they have achieved success as well, advancing along uh, the position by one kilometer, 500 meters. Battles are ongoing, but that's not all. Near the Kirkin plant, they also have successes, advancing by one kilometer. They have practically approached the plant, taking control of part of the slag heap. While they may not establish themselves there, they have complete fire control. In the area of Severne, complex battles continue. But the Russians haven't achieved success there yet and Shalin persists. Therefore, today the distance from the extreme front line is exactly 7 kilometers. Looking from the northern flank to Orlivka, a key settlement in this section of the front, it is 4 kilometers, 400 meters away. Overall, uh, it must be acknowledged that despite significant losses, the Russians have managed to advance. To the south, battles continue for Marinka and the village of Pabeda. There is a significant amount of shelling and it seems uh, that the Russians aim for success here as well. There are no changes on the front line over the day. In the Vukhidar direction, uh, there is also unfortunate news. 
As a result of numerous attacks by occupiers on Staromayorske and the territory that was previously in the gray zone, it has now entirely transitioned to the red zone, with an estimated advancement of the occupiers being 4 kilometers. Attacks persist and the maximum number of shelling continues. However, oh, there are not uh, the only negative developments. The current day doesn't bring much joy with changes along the front line. In the Zaporizhia direction, as many observed yesterday, the Russians attacked in three directions – Nerobotine, Novoprokopivka and Verbove. It is now confirmed that they have managed to take control of the entire territory that was previously considered a gray zone. Previously, the Ukrainian armed forces occasionally uh, broke through there, and now it is under Russian control. Essentially, the advancement can be stated as four and a half kilometers. If earlier there was a chance of a breakthrough to the village of Ocheretuate, which was the last significant fortified area in this direction, now the distance from the extreme front line to the village is eight and a half kilometers. In today's realities of combat operation, this is a vast territory and overcoming it will be very challenging. No new offensive actions are reported today, for now only shelling continues. In the Kherson direction, powerful shelling from the Russians continue as before along the right bank of the Dnipro River with no new changes along the front line. Although the occupiers don't cease reporting that the Ukrainian armed forces are gradually advancing and the occupiers who didn't expect such pressure are abandoning their positions. Meanwhile, at the UN meeting, the Russian representative continues shamelessly lying, UN members continue to listen, and Russia continues to kill Ukrainians. Today, не нашла слов, чтобы осудить этот закон. Закон, который сейчас рассматривает украинский парламент, нацелен на запрет древней канонической православной церкви. И вместо того, чтобы бить в набат, требовать его отзыва, вы здесь читаете лекцию о том, как его лучше сформулировать, чтобы он не выглядел столь отвратительно. Кроме того, у вас не нашлось ни одного слова, чтобы осудить использование правоохранительной машины Киева для преследования уважаемых священников. 19 октября 2023 года парламент Украины принял в первом чтении законопроект 8371 о внесении изменений в некоторые законы Украины о деятельности на Украине религиозных организаций. Единственной целью которой является полный запрет деятельности Украинской Православной Церкви. В случае принятия упомянутый закон позволит запретить в судебном порядке деятельность любой украинской религиозной организации в судебном порядке, которая аффилирована с центрами влияния в России. Россия нанесла серьезный ущерб многочисленным религиозным объектам, в том числе зданиям православных храмов, в поддержке которых она заявляет. Право на свободу вероисповедания внутри самой России повсеместно нарушается. Все это говорит о том, насколько по-настоящему безразлична Россия к вопросу свободы религии. Тревожно осознавать, что Россия пытается оправдать свои преступления и нарушения законов, описывая свою военную агрессию как священную войну между добром и злом, в дополнение к придуманному предлогу о денацификации Украины. К нам необходимо видеть за всем этим реальную ситуацию и обратить внимание на хорошо задокументированную систематическую политику религиозных репрессий на оккупированных Россией территориях. In the town of Sovetsk in Russia, a woman uh, threw a Molotov cocktail into the building of the local draft board. She documented her actions by recording the incidents on her phone camera. So it appears that the flash mob with arson attacks on military enlistment officers continues. <laughs>
А что здесь происходит? Today is also the 81st birthday of the American leader Joe Biden and we congratulate him on this occasion. And that's all from me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.